Farmers dumping fresh produce, wiped out supermarket shelves and eateries ordered shut, COVID-19 movement restrictions were a big shock to our food supply chain. And while the immediate crisis may be under control, it's not the end of the story. How food secure is Malaysia? And are we prepared for the next crisis? First, what is food security? According to the UN, it's a concept that measures whether a country and its people have physical, social, and economic access to foods that meet their preferences, nutritional, and dietary needs at any given time. Okay, here's a way cooler explanation by Dr. Serena Che Omar. Imagine in Malaysia, we can produce all the rice enough for the whole country, but it is produced in Langkawi on an island. And imagine that the ferry broke down. So even if we can produce all the food, if there's no transport to bring the food to Kuala Lumpur, it is a food security issue. Now, even if we can bring the food to Kuala Lumpur, if you can't afford it, or if you can afford it, but you don't know how to cook it, it is a food security issue still. Now, interestingly, even if you can bring the food to Kuala Lumpur, you can purchase it, you know how to cook it, but if you consume rice every single day without chicken, without vegetables and fruits, it's a nutritional disaster. It is still a food security issue. So food security isn't just about the amount of food. It's multifactorial, basically taking into account these four things, availability, access, utilization, and stability. There are other ways of measuring food security. For example, the Global Food Security Index measures it by affordability, availability, and quality and safety. In other words, is there enough food readily available at a price people can afford that is suitably nutritious and safe? These three measures of food security are also balanced against risk factors like political stability and climate change. Rice production will go down by 30% with an increase of 1.5 degrees Celsius in temperature. Now, 30% is really a lot and it is really a big thing that will have huge impact to our rice uh, production. The research has also showed is that we have experienced an increase in temperature between 0.6 to 1.4 degrees Celsius between 1970 to 2000. So from 2000 to two, uh, 2020, similar increase will happen. So can you imagine 30% of reduction will happen? This is one of Malaysia's food security risks, along with high rates of health problems caused by malnutrition. But Malaysia is still ranked a pretty decent 28th out of the 113 countries analyzed. However, a global pandemic can change a lot. During the pandemic, we also saw another thing happening. What happened was uh, many countries that produce food in abundance, for example, Thailand produces rice more than what they need. They're an exporter, but due to uncertainty, what they wanted to do was they wanted to keep it for themselves. They wanted to stock it up for themselves. They banned in, uh, export. Now, when that happens, what um, it affects importing countries like Malaysia. So you see, uh, it's still a vulnerable uh, situation. And this happens not only during pandemic, during any crisis, countries that produce food will try to stock up for themselves first. And this example was a real concern for us. Yes, we import fancy things like oysters, but we also import essentials like rice. In fact, agricultural economics professor Nasir at University Putra Malaysia pointed that with the exception of poultry, eggs, pork, and fisheries, Malaysia depends on imports of most of its food items. We produce 70% of the rice that we need. So when Thailand and Vietnam stopped exporting, what did we do? Struck up a new trade deal with India. Crisis averted. But there's another problem. An analysis by Malaysian Institute of Economic Research projects 2.4 million job losses from COVID-19 this year. That means that some households may suddenly have less spending power but as millions more are now cooking at home more often, the price of fresh produce has increased. If things worsen, we could have a food affordability problem on our hands. Speaking of hands, the hands that grow our food might not be around anymore. The agriculture industry in Malaysia relies a lot on our migrant workers to grow our crops. Now, officially, we rely about 30% of our migrant workers to grow the crops. In vegetables, it's about 100,000 migrants. In poultry, 
the percentage is about 70% migrants that's growing and feeding our chicken. And when it comes to fishing in the deeper sea, in zone C, that is almost 100% migrant workers. Now, what happened during the MCO is that they're not covered under the Prihatin program. They may have lost their job or the company that they work for may have been shut down. And so because of that, there might be a long-term loss of our migrant workers in the food systems. And that will affect our ability to produce food at our usual levels. Recap time. We already import a percentage of our food. The pandemic at MCO caused international trade and local supply chain disruptions. Job losses hit our farming migrant workers as well as reducing the spending power of many households. On top of that, experts predict that as our population continues to grow, dietary habits change and climate change escalates, our food security will face bigger threats. So are all of us Malaysians going to starve soon? Well, how can we protect ourselves from future food crisis? Number one, we need to relook at the various, um, what do you call it, the various factors of food security and to make sure we holistically address them. In other words, don't just think about food supply and producing food domestically, but all the other factors of food security are not addressed. And one of our weakest link is actually we do not spend a lot of money on R&D. That's research and development. While there are future risks, there are ways we can mitigate them. What we need to do is invest in researching these methods. It takes at least about 10 to 15 years for research to do on breeding, on disease control, on good practices. And we need to do all of this now in order to reap the benefits 10 years from now so that our farming can be more productive and yet done in a more safer environment. So money needs to be put in place here in universities, in government agencies, in private sector, so that we can get the kickstart that research and development in agriculture. In fact, low government spending in agricultural R&D is one of the areas we scored lowest in the Food Security Index. And let's not forget about those hands we need to grow our food. Look at all our farmers. They're not young people. They're always in the 50s or even 60s to 70s. Now, what happens when they can't do farming anymore? When they sort of retire from their practice? So we need new, fresh pool of uh, farmers and the young people are not really attracted to farming for many reasons. This is not a glamorous job. Um, it is really hard work and it doesn't really pay much. Urban farming, smart farming is what we need. Like you see, if we look at the US where farming is done in a very, very large scale, you will see a huge piece of land is just managed by a couple. So it could be just the husband and the wife or the father and the son or the father and the daughter. Now, why that is possible is because of innovation and technology. The good news is this is all on the government's radar. In fact, Minister of Agriculture and Food Industry, Ronald Kiandi, said that the younger generation are the key to the modernization of agriculture in Malaysia. And the ministry's Young Agripreneur Program has already given non-monetary grants to 5,000 entrepreneurs. A cabinet committee on food security has also been announced with the intention of creating a national food security policy prompted by the recent crisis. The policy will focus on the agri-food sector, strengthening the food supply chain, improving support and delivery services, enhancing technical knowledge and skills, as well as promoting greater compliance to standards and good agricultural practices. Well, a pandemic is a perfect recipe for food crisis and we are, see, when we are seeing it right now, there's so much of um, uncertainties. Um, a lot of things, a lot of supply chain is broken. This is not going to be the last food crisis, but I think COVID will be a good teacher for us so that we get prepared and we mend all those broken links everywhere along the supply chain.